rise and shine. Hey, it's Gavin. Whoa, why did the light just suddenly change like that for? What? Oh my god. There's some kind, there must be some kind of ghostly presence in the room. Okay, if it keeps changing, if it keeps flashing, it's because there's a party up in here. I feel really, really weird that I don't have a opening theme tune for you guys. Maybe, maybe I will do some more in the future for other like theme things, but at the minute I'm just pooped. I am absolutely pooped. I don't even know if I'm gonna like use this vlog update or anything just yet, because I was a little unsure whether I wanted to do a vlog um, over the next couple of weeks. I just... I am so knackered, like physically and emotionally knackered. With Believeathon coming up next month, I want to make sure that I give it my all and that there's so much I want to do for it. And I'm just like, I just haven't had the time to really just focus, like mentally focus on it. So next week I've got some Believeathon videos coming and I'm very excited about those. I think from starting from next week, it's going to be... Believe it or not, believe it or not, believe it or not. You know, so it's it's gonna be all good. I have a lot of reading updates for you actually because I'm in the middle of reading three books. So <laughs> let me just grab those for you. Well, two of them are buddy reads and one of them is a book for Bornathon. So I'll talk about the Bornathon one first. I am reading The Born Season by Samantha Shannon. Sorry, the light is weird for this one. Okay, so this one is for Bornathon. If you haven't, not I don't know if I've like officially said in a video yet, but I'm gonna be one of the like co-hosts of Bornathon. I'm going to be part of a live show, which I don't know the date or time for it yet. But if I find out during this week, I'll let you know in this vlog. If this vlog even goes up, oh my god. Okay, I am 60 pages into this and I'm going to try and read like around about 50 to 60 pages per day. And the, I don't think the live show is going to be until the end of this month. But So like it'll give me plenty of time. I'll just chip away at it. And although saying that, I'll probably have to put this aside just for now because I am reading the other two. But he reads at the minute. This one has been intriguing so far. So we've been following Paige and she has some kind of ability where she can, I think she can sense people's auras or something like that. Like, oh, I'm so bad at this. Like fantasy is like not one that really sticks in my head. Like I always end up forgetting things. But on the back it says she's a dream walker, but I don't think don't think that's been mentioned so far on this that she's a dream walker. I know that she can like sense other people with auras because it's like a clairvoyant underworld. And I'm sorry, Ashley, I'm sorry if I'm butchering this up right now. But oh also Ashley is the um what do you call it? Ashley is the main host of Bornathon. She is the ultimate goddess of Bornathon. Yeah, sorry Ashley, I'm butchering this up right now. But I think when I, once I've read a bit more, I'll know what it, like it's about and kind of and how to describe it. But you know I'm terrible at describing stuff. Also, Ashley, I've taken off all the spiders on this cobweb thing here for you. I did it for you because I knew you'd freak out if I had them on there. So I've taken them off for you. Yeah, so I'm enjoying this so far. Not an off. Well, actually, saying that a few things have happened. So in the first chapter, we had the. Oh, I don't know. Can I say? It? I mean, it is the first chapter. I should be fine. The main character kills someone. Is that a spoiler? It's the first chapter, so I don't think it's really a spoiler, but she kills someone. And then she is kind of like taken to this other place and it's like the lost city of Oxford. And it's just, it's so intriguing so far. And I've heard that there's like a lot of people complaining that this is very info dumpy at the start, but I don't think it is. I don't think it's even that info dumpy. I think it's, a lot of it's connected and a lot of it's like woven into the main character's story in the present day. So sometimes it goes, um, well, sometimes it tells you little facts and things about the world and what's happened before and like the world's history. And I, I like that. I don't think it's dumping too much information on me at once. So liking this so far. And I am also buddy reading Horror Store by Grady Hendrix with Cody. And I'm on page 51 of this. I only started reading it today. We have just started buddy reading it today. I need to read more though. We haven't really discussed how much we want to read per day. We kind of just want to go with the flow. But we want to make sure that we have it done by Sunday. But this is such an easy, like, how you seen the way it's laid out? You know, it's for like an Ikea catalog and it's the writing's like big-ish. So this one will not take us long at all. So I'm just going to, I'll read some more in a bit and see where I end up and then just message Cody be like, hey, so this is good so far. This is also, I should tell you what this one's about. 
So horror store is set in a fake IKEA store called Orsk. And on a night time, it seems that weird things happen, things get vandalized, and the manager asks two of the employees if they will do an overnight shift with him to find out who's doing this. And we are introduced to Amy, who is our sort of like main character. And she wants a transfer. She doesn't really like exactly where she works. And she doesn't like her manager, but she agrees to do it. She's really desperate to do it for money and stuff. It's really bizarre, but I'm getting Superstore vibes from this. Now, if you don't know what Superstore is, it is a NBC comedy sitcom, which I love. I love that show. I'm a, I might be a season or two behind at the minute but I really enjoy that show and I don't know why but it, like some of the moments in this could just kind of remind me of what would happen in an episode of Superstore and Amy and Amy is the main character on this and Amy is the main character on Superstore so like I'm kind of seeing a bit of similarity there but I think I'm at what chapter am I actually on I'm on chapter four right okay so like the, I've read the first three chapters and so far it's like going a bit fast which is pretty good because it is only like 250 pages long already that they're doing the night shift and you know the first chapter like set it up and stuff and it was quite funny and it was quite good to see how relatable Amy is because you know I've worked retail and I've worked with like customers for a very long time and I know sort of like the trials of that and how hard it can be sometimes. I do relate to Amy I think as a retail worker you can relate to Amy and she's like a fun sort of protagonist at the minute. Yeah, um, certain things, like, it's been very subtle, the kind of, because this is supposed to be a horror, but, like, it's been very subtle. I wouldn't have said anything's been scary yet. It's been intriguing, though. I am really intrigued to see what more comes of this. Yeah, that's all I've got for you on this update at the minute, but, yeah. Like, I haven't used this in such a long time, but I am reading Marrow Charm by Kristen Jack on my Kindle. I am 11% in, but I'm buddy reading this with Paige and I'm trying to get, well, we're trying to do at least 20% per day. But also, it's like, it's going to be hard to do that as well. I'm working and I have another buddy read at the minute. So I am going to try and get to 20%. I'll go to bed and whatever and read some in bed. Yeah, so, so far I'm enjoying this as well. So this is set in a, like, so far from what I've gathered from the 11% I've read of this, it's set sort of like the... Uh, people are living underground and there are like monsters and things like on ground so it's a bit weird but I'm getting Bloodborne vibes from this like with the PlayStation 4 game and I like the atmosphere I enjoyed the first chapter it was like very fast-paced and I'm I'm intrigued in what's happened in this world and there is something called the rot which is I guess a, an event that seems to be coming and it doesn't sound pretty. So that seems pretty good. The main character, is she called Azzy? I'm sure the main character, yeah. So Azzy is our protagonist. She's very good. So Azzy is our protagonist. I'll just put the cover up here. Azzy is the protagonist and she has been a bit feisty so far, actually. She's managed to do some stuff in the first chapter that really showed her strength. And yeah, so far so good on that one. And not a lot to say about it just yet. I am still very early days with that. But I am looking forward to reading more and to see what Paige has been saying about it. Paige did mention that she's getting is it City of Ember vibes. Is that what she said? I've never read City of Ember and it might be the total wrong thing I'm thinking of. It might not be City of Ember, but I think she said City of Ember. So that's good, I think. I've actually never shown you guys my Kindle before, have I? I don't know, like... What, like, should I show you some of my books and things on here? Like, should I do a little Kindle walkthrough? This update will end up running along, I guess. But here is my sort of books thing. I don't even know how to set this out as well to do it. Because, like, also, like, if I do that, it's got... Ooh, look at that, the ring light. I used to read on my Kindle so much, like, until I worked at Waterstones. And I started reading physical books again. So you'll probably see um, a few books on here that I have physically. So at the top there, I have the Ben Aronovich books, which is the... See, the Rivers of London is the first book, and it's got a proper name, the series. And it's sort of like, oh God, I can't even, I wouldn't even know how to describe it. I know what it's about in my head, but I don't know how to speak it. I have Prayers for Bobby, which I really want to read. I love the Lifetime movie of it, starring Sigourney Weaver. It really made me cry. So I, I really do want to read Prayers for Bobby. It's a non-fiction, and I don't usually read non-fiction, but... I really do want to give that a read. I've read Call Me By Your Name. I've read Children of Blood and Bone. I haven't read the Hazel. I have not read the Hazelwood yet, but I have it physically. I don't think I will ever read Leia on the offbeat. I think the only reason I have it on here is because it was really cheap on Kindle. 
one day. Uh, so my vases have my that house of chicken legs, you know I've read that. Flowers in the attic, I would like to read that sometime. Thirteen reasons why, haven't read that. Hammy's Tale, I have read. Ghost Files, April Baker. Oh, yeah, April Baker. Um, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna... I'm not gonna read them all out, I guess. Just like show you guys some things. Um, Walking Dead books. I've only read the first two Walking Dead books, which were Rise of the Governor and The Road to Woodbury. But I need to read the Fall of the Governor books, and they were split in two parts. But I don't know if I'm that interested in reading them. To be honest, like I've kind of fallen out of love with The Walking Dead. It used to be like my favorite show, like a few years ago. Like it was like like back when it was like say like between season two and season five. I think was when the show was like my all time favorite. I have. I don't think I'll ever read City of Bones. I don't know why I've got it there. I read all the Hunger Games books on the Kindle back when they back. I think the first movie came out, or it might be just before the first movie came out, and I really wanted to read them all. And I read them all. I devoured them all. I loved them all. Um, I have the Witches of East End books, I think the first three, they don't really, some of these I had to buy on the Amazon US store and get them sent to my Kindle because the UK store doesn't have a lot of the books that I've got on here. So I had to like sneakily change my address on Amazon so that I can buy the books on the Kindle because I didn't want to download them illegally because they, I mean one, that's terrible and you should never do it. Two. They will come up really badly on the Kindle, you know, formatting wise and stuff. So I just wanted to buy them. I just wanted to buy them and have them properly. There's the Strain series. I used to watch that TV show. I think that's by Guillermo. What is it? Guillermo del Toro. Guillermo del Toro. And the Strain series is like a vampire kind of series. And I watched the first season of the TV show. And I enjoyed the first season of the TV show, actually. So I've been wanting to read the books. I've got the three of them there. I've got 102 minutes there. I. God, I think I got halfway through and I stopped reading because it got me really emotional. Uh, I downloaded it a couple of years ago. Um, I think it was when, I think it was on September 11, a few years ago. And I just wanted to read about the stories of people who survived and really feel like the heartwarming aspect of it, you know, that they've survived and they've, you know, conquered evil kind of thing. And uh, But I got really emotional. I couldn't finish it. <laughs> Maybe I'll finish it one day. Wicked Deep, I've, I read that on the Kindle. And Paige gifted, gifted me that. And some Neil Gaiman there. Uh, that's the Rizzoli Niles book. Tess Gerritsen, and the Surgeon. The Princess Bride, I need to read that. I've never read John Green before as well. And I've got the Charlene Harris books on there as well. I don't know, Elephant is completely fine. I love that book. Ravensgate by Anthony Horowitz. That's the Power of Five series. I only ever read the first book. But I really enjoyed the first book. There's Mara Charm, which I'm currently reading. Uh, do, do, do. some Stephen King there. I have almost all of them physically apart from Under the Dome and Carrie, but I have read Carrie. Never read Under the Dome. It's really long. I watched the first two seasons of the show and then gave up. I enjoyed the first season. I didn't really like the second season that much. That cover for I Am Number 4 is absolutely freaking awful. Absolutely awful. I'll hold it up here. It looks better on like that. Got the first three Seven J Mass books. I have all of the Game of Thrones books on here with those covers. I do enjoy those covers. So I got them all on the Kindle. I got the first three Twilight books and I don't have Breaking Dawn, but I have them all physically, it's fine. Um, all the Dorothy must die. I really enjoy these ones that move. Like there's this one there, they add Edgar Allan Poe. Like these ones, like they move. Like I'll show you. Like can you see like how it moves and stuff? It's like a very interactive kind of story. Um, which I do enjoy. I've got a couple of these actually, I'll show you some more. But, like, see that? Hey, that's so cool, I do enjoy that. So I will get off that. Um, so that is Darkness there. I think Tales by Edgar Allan Poe, I think. Uh, oh, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. This is one of the reasons why I hated the Kindle, was I bought it with the original cover, but then it just updated to the movie cover and I hate it. So, well, I don't hate the movie, but I hate the movie cover. Not that I hate it per se. I just wanted, I just wanted the normal cover, okay? It's what I bought. But sometimes Kindle would do that. It would update and it would change the covers so that they would be the movie covers and it would just piss me off. Um, so I've got all the Harry Potter books on there as well with those covers, which I'm not a big fan of those covers. But I also have an interactive Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone um, illustrated edition. Let's see if. 
you can see it properly. Come on. Oh my god, where where am I? I'm at the end. <laughs> um so yeah, this this one moves as well, like the Edgar Allan Poe ones. So we can see the smoke there, and Hedwig is flying, the toad. Um, there's some more move ones. The cat's tail moves, and nothing moves. <laughs> oh, hey, that that looks so good. But there's a good one actually coming up there, this one. They like can see the smoke moving and then Hagrid flying. It just looks so good like that. It looks amazing. That's moving. Can you see the snake? How it's getting its tongue out. Like, that's just so cool. So, yeah. I do like those interactive ones. It's one of the things I, I really enjoy about the Kindle One. I don't know if the Chamber of Secrets and that um, have the interactive element of it. Do, do, do. Some Vampire Diaries books. Uh, yeah, and that's about it for oh the Kindle Tour. So now the Kindle Tour is out of the way, I have a parcel. <laughs> Confuzzle Bev. 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 Uh, so there's two. Do Gav, happy Halloween. Happy Halloween, come puzzle Beth. And do Gav, I want to send you some point horror, but they're only available secondhand, so Amazon wouldn't let me select a wish list address. So here is a different creepy book. Ooh, let's see what these are. So excited. The first, oh yeah, there's two books. So the first one is The Wrong Train by Jeremy DeQuit. DeQuit? DeQuit? A macabre masterpiece, haunting in every sense of the word. The wrong train. Realising he's on the wrong train, a boy jumps off the next stop, but it's dark and late and the little platform he finds himself on is quite deserted. Deserted until an old man walking his dog offers to keep him company. Offers to tell the boy stories to pass the time while he waits for a train home. Only these aren't just stories. These are nightmares and there's nowhere to hide and they come with the price to pay. Scared? You will be. Ooh. Oh, this looks so cool. I've never heard of this. Is it a children's book? It's got like things like that, like, you know, little illustrations in. So I think it might be children's book, might be middle grade, maybe. Oh, I, I love it. I, it's, it, it's such an understated cover as well, but it, it fits. It fits. It looks so good. Thank you for that one, Cuffles. I've never heard of it. I've never heard of it. Should be good though. And the next one is, oh, wow. Okay. I've seen this author before, so this is Shadowsmith by Ross McKenzie, who wrote The Nowhere Emporium, which I've seen, I don't actually have. So this must be a standalone. You never know until you need to know, and Kirby Simpson is about to find out. Kirby has been watched by a spider. We are still a strange girl with extraordinary powers, bangs on his window in the middle of the night. Stuff like this doesn't happen to him. Exactly how frightened should he be? Ooh, another... Creepy sounding children's book. I think this might be children's. I'm not 100% sure. But this one's definitely children's book. I've seen these, this author around. But ah, oh, this looks so cool. And I like, I do like how there's a bit cut out on the front cover there. So it's like a door kind of thing. Oh, I love that. Look at that. That is so creepy. But beautiful. It's like a graveyard with lots of candles. And like, it looks like this is maybe even be a spirit or two in there. Ah, this looks so cool. And it's a Blue Peter Award winner. So I do love me some Blue Peter. Ah, thank you so much for these Confuzzle Bev. You are the absolute best. And I was not expecting these. I never do expect them. But you guys surprise me every single week. And I am so grateful. Thank you so much. I'm going to, I need, I'm going to read up more on this one. This has really, this has me really intrigued. This has me so intrigued. So yeah, that is my first update of this vlog. And so I, I may as well just do the vlog. Look, it may be all dramatic. Like, I don't know if I'm going to do a vlog or not. Obviously, I'm doing a vlog. So there you go. There's the first update of this vlog that dramatically might not have happened. But it's going to happen. It's going to happen. So I'm at work the next two days. So I don't know how much reading I'm going to get done. 
but hopefully a lot. Also, I'm seeing Maleficent Mistress of Evil on Sunday with Adam and Mark, and I'm looking forward to that. This, wait, is it, it's Thursday, isn't it? It feels really weird starting this vlog on a Thursday because obviously I used to do the Monday to Sunday, but I've changed things up a little bit in anticipation for believe -a -thon and with me just finishing gilmore -thon. So things are a little crazy right now and probably won't go back to normal until like December, January time. So this is it. This is it, guys. This is the final stretch to the end of the year. Gosh, I can't believe I'm saying that. But anyway, I'm going to head off. I'm going to read so much and chat to you later. It was payday. So obviously I went all out and got some stuff. I usually I blow through a lot of my money and then I have nothing left by the end of the week. So <laughs> I did get some things today and I'm so happy. I haven't got a reading update for you right now. Sorry, reading, reading vlog. Also, I do have this, Dolores Claiborne, which, um, by Stephen King, which was sent by Bobby at Bobby Reads Too Much. And I knew this was coming, so I already opened it. Thank you so much, Bobby, for this. I knew you were sending me more Stephen King. You are incredible, the best. Thank you so much. I think it's Dolores Claiborne. I think that's Dolores. I think it's Dolores Claiborne. Dolores Cla Claiborne. Dolores Claiborne has a confession to make. She'll take her time, won't be hurried, we'll do it her way. Sparing neither details nor feelings, hers or anyone else's. This is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Truth that makes you, truth that takes you to the edge of darkness. Dolores Claiborne has a story to tell and you better pay attention or else. Looks very good. So I opened this this morning and um, when it came in. I had work today, I finished at 9 and I got home at 10 and I had a bath and things. It's like nearly midnight now and I have work again at 9.30. So I don't know if I'm going to manage to sleep, so I might just stay up, I might ha I might do an all-nighter, I might read some, I might read some stuff. I am behind on my reading, I need to get a 40% marrow charm, but I'm only on 25%, and I'm only about page 70-ish for Horror Store, wait, maybe 80, I think I'm on page 80 of Horror Store, by Grady Hendrix, which I am buddy reading with Cody, so I'm going to try and read some more of that. So I will show you what I bought today and one of them I'm really, really excited to to show you. And you'll know why when you say it. But I also got a parcel delivered from someone when I got home from work. This was here, so I'm really excited. I don't know who sent it. I'll open it now. Might be Bobby again. I don't know. Oh, this is right. This is from Elizabeth. Hi, Gavin. I thought as I'm the one who recommended the series, I would get this for you. I really hope you like it. From Elizabeth, your subscriber from Canada. I love Canada. I've been all over Canada. Well, I say all over Canada. I've been to Toronto, Ottawa, Kitchener. Um, where else have I been? I've been other places, I promise. Um, yeah, I love Canada. I love, love, love Canada. It's so great. Oh, gosh. And I think just over a year ago was the last time I was in Canada as well. I'm so gutted. I, I, I miss it so much. Uh, but thank you so much, Elizabeth. So you recommended the series. Oh, of course. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay, so this is Keeper of the Lost... I remember. I remember now. Keepers of the Lost Cities by Shannon Messenger. I'd never heard of this before Elizabeth mentioned it to me. And it is about 12-year-old Sophie Foster has a secret. She's a telepath and has unique ability to hear the thoughts of everyone around her, something that she's never known how to explain. And she has made her, and has made her an outcast. Sorry, I can't read right now. It's like nearly midnight, even in her own family. But everything changes the day she meets Fitz, a mysterious boy who appears out of nowhere and also reads minds. She discovers there's somewhere she does belong, and staying where she is will put her in grave danger. In the blink of an eye, Sophie is forced to leave behind everything and start a new life in a place that is vastly different from her own. Sophie has new rules and skills to learn, and not everyone is thrilled with her homecoming. There are secrets buried deep in Sophie's memory, secrets that other people desperately want. Would even kill for. Ooh, well this being like a children's book. Kill for? Gosh, that's very serious. But that's a long series. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think there's seven books in the series, according to the back. But that's a, such a cool cover as well. I love that cover. Oh, it just looks so magical and beautiful and amazing. Oh, there's so many middle grades I need to get to. So many children's books I want to read. Elizabeth, thank you so, so much for this. You did recommend it. I hope I love this. If you loved it, I'm sure I will love it as well. So what did I buy today? It's mainly books. I haven't bought anything like clothes wise, although I do need to go clothes shopping and things like that to prepare for a night out I'm having next at the end of next month. 
it's going to be like a Peaky Blinders sort of themed kind of night. Like, I need to go for that kind of attire. So, like, oh gosh, it's going to be so good. And I hope I will find a suitable outfit for it. That's not too expensive. So, I'm going to be doing, you know, stuff like that. I've paid bills. I've I feel so much better, but at the same time, I've, I, I just like, oh, I can't stop spending money. So this is a, a serious problem. It is an actual genuine problem of mine. Like I need to stop spending money I don't really have. I need to get out of overdrafts. I need to do other stuff. I'm not going to I'm not going to get into it now. Um, but I just, I, I just, it makes me so happy though when I buy some books. So I'm going to show you what I bought. <laughs> so I got, one of the things I got was The Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. I really wanted this beautiful edition. Uh, look at that. Look, you've got Dorothy, the Tip Man, the Scarecrow, the Lion, and Toto. Yeah, so like this is a beautiful edition. And I think this is going to be read next month. I think this is going to be for my Read a Childhood Favourite prompt for Believe-a-thon. I, I definitely want to read this like ASAP. I love this as a child and I want to see if it holds up today. I'm pretty sure Becca showed me this cover of it as well a couple of weeks back and I just fell in love. I fell in love. So I got this one. I also got uh, Fairest and Stars Above by Marissa Meyer. I'm sure these are like prequels or like novellas in the Lunar Chronicles series. I read the Lunar Chronicles earlier this year and I really enjoyed it. So I was told to read these as well. So I will probably read these at some point. They're not really a top priority for me right now. But I'm pretty sure, you know, um, Fairest is about Levant. Lev is it Levana? Is about Levana. She was the uh, she was the antagonist in the Luna Chronicles series, and I really enjoyed her as a character. Actually, she was very evil. And Stars Above is sort of, I guess, like loads of different stories. Or, because it says, like, how did Cinder first arrive in New Beijing? How did the brood and soldier wolf transform from young man to killer when the Princess Winter and the palace guard Jason realized their destinies? All right, so I think it's, like, split into parts where you, yeah. So, like, an, a short story collection kind of thing. I also bought books two and three of Michelle Harrison's 13 Treasure series, uh, which I got the second book, 13 Curses. No, hang on. Yeah, 13 Curses is the second book, and 13 Secrets is the third book. I already have 13 Treasures, which is the first book. They were re-released in these beautiful covers. They did come out like a decade ago, and Michelle Harrison, she wrote A Pinch of Magic, which I absolutely loved, and I am really excited to read this series, actually. So 13 Treasures is the first one, and yeah, it's like a proper trilogy, and it's I'm sure it's like, it's to do with like fairies, but evil fairies, I think. Like dark forces, um, blah blah blah. I'll get, I'll get the first one. So this is the first one, and the first one is about fairies, but not the fairies we imagine. These fairies cast spells on our protagonist Tanya, rousing her from sleep and propelling her out of bed. Disturbed by her daughter's behaviour, Tanya's mother sends her away to live with her grandmother at Elvisden Manor, a secluded countryside mansion on the outskirts of town. And yeah, it's it just seems like this very magical kind of story. So that's them all together. Can you see? Oh, they're just so beautiful. I love them. And I'm really excited to get to them. And this was Michelle Harrison's debut in 2009. So I'm really excited to get to it. Happy 10 year anniversary. So I might read this next month for the 10 year anniversary of 13 Treasures. Let's see. Oh my God, there's so many possibilities. I also got The Star Outside My Window by Anjali Q. Roth. And this one's a signed one. There we go. Beautifully signed there. She wrote The Boy in the Man of the Class, which I gave five stars, absolutely loved, made me cry. And this one is very hard hitting, apparently. It's trigger warnings for abuse and suicide and things like that. And in a children's book, that's very hard hitting. I don't really know a better word to describe it, but it sounds like it's going to be a very tough read. So I might read this for my prompt to read a book with real life issues for Believe a Thorn. Who knows? I'm really looking forward to it because I think Aunt Charlie is a fantastic writer. I also picked up the illustrated edition of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I have all of the other ones and A History of Magic. And this one is, it is beautiful, but I am a little disappointed. The fact that it's not that much bigger than Prisoner of Azkaban, even though Goblet of Fire is chunkier than Prisoner of Azkaban originally. The writing is a bit smaller. There are, I, it doesn't seem like there's any more illustrations than there is in Prisoner of Azkaban. It looks to be pretty much about the same amount. And there are some chapters where there are like no illustrations whatsoever. 
which, you know, we're buying the illustrated edition. It's what I buy the illustrated editions for. If I want to read the story, I could read the story anytime. But the illustrated editions do add so much more to the story, you know, visually, and it really helped, especially during Christmas and New Year's when I reread the series and I read the first three in the illustrated edition versions for the first time. It was very magical and very beautiful and I love the illustrations. And I will hopefully get to this at some point. I have only just reread it earlier this year. Goblet of Fire was the first book I read in 2019. So I don't think I'll read this this year. I might read it I might read it when Order of the Phoenix Illustrated Edition comes out and like read them back to back. By that point, like by the time that comes out, I don't know when it comes out, but by that point I'm sure I will be, you know, ready for it. But I am really glad to have it still. It will be part of my collection and yeah, just beautiful, beautiful. And I absolutely love the cover as well. It's probably my favourite cover out of all of the Harry Potter Illustrated Editions, I think. Yeah. I love it. it, just like continues on to the back and it's just, oh, it's beautiful. And the thing that I'm most excited to show you is my Frozen 2 The Magical Guide, which I bought. I ordered it in specially for me and it's got fun facts, quizzes and a poster in it. Oh my God. That is amazing. You've got Kristoff, Anna, Olaf, Sven and Elsa there. Oh, and Fire Spirit. Look how cute that Fire Spirit is. Can you see it? Oh, it's gonna be the cutest thing to hit Disney in a long time. Oh, I'm so excited for Frozen 2. Gosh, literally just over a month to go until I see it. I can't really read it because I think there's some story spoilers for the film. Because it goes through so... <gasps> Are you more Elsa or Anna? <gasps> there's a proper quiz. Oh my god, I'm doing this. Let's find out if I'm an Elsa or an Anna. Let's end this debate once and for all. I need a pen. Right, play along at home and tell me if you end up becoming more an Elsa or an Anna. Okay, so question one. Are you comfortable in the spotlight? A. Yes, the world is my stage. B. No, I can be a little awkward with too much attention. I'm definitely a B. I mean, I know you're saying like I've got a booktube channel and blah blah blah, but I don't really like it when there's too much attention on me. I like to do booktube as an outlet and I genuinely love making videos and making you guys smile and stuff. It's like it really helps me and it helps my mental health and things like that. So it's just like a really great thing for me to do. So I'm definitely a B. I don't really like too much attention. I can be a bit awkward with it. So I'm definitely a B on that one. How do you like to spend free time? A. Hanging out and having fun. Or B. Being at one with nature. To be honest, neither. <laughs> um, I don't think I... Being at one with nature, I don't know. I would be more A, I think. Yeah, definitely more A. On that one even though like hanging out like yeah I kind of do because I like to go to the cinema and I do like my occasional nights out and things but I do say occasional I do say occasional uh, but I would probably say more a so three how would your friends describe you a bold and outgoing or B the quiet but strong leader of the group I'm definitely not quiet so it has to be a but I probably would say neither again like I just I don't think I see myself as bold and outgoing Really? How bold, I guess you could think, you know, I put myself out on booktube and stuff. I guess that's a bold thing to do. Uh, four, how do you deal with your problems? A, I always share them with my family. B, I like to sort out my by myself. Definitely B. Definitely B. I like to keep things internally most of the time. And usually I implode or explode, it depends. I just, I don't like to burden other people with my drama, really, or my problems. So I like to keep it in. I like to keep it in. So question number five. How do you make a hard decision? A. I trust my first instinct and rush straight in. Or B. I give a lot of thought and make it carefully. Definitely B. I don't think that I would just rush straight into something. I overanalyze things sometimes and I do try and think about it a lot more. So definitely a B. So there's only five questions. So it's a very thorough quiz. So you'll know if you're an Anna or an Elsa. So if you get mostly A's, you're Anna. But if you get more C-Bays, you're Elsa. And I got more C-Bays. I got three Bs and two A's. So I'm Elsa. I'm Elsa. Of course I'm Elsa. So with Elsa, you can come across as shy, but once you feel comfortable, you come out of your shell. Thoughtful and a careful decision maker, you are clearly a true leader. Don't know about the leader part, but everything else I think is pretty true. And I love that. But if you've got honour, if you've got mostly A's, you're a natural born motivator who brings out the best in people. You sometimes act before thinking, which can cause trouble, but you always mean well. Uh, all of you honours out there, 
Love it. Oh my gosh. So yeah, let me know who you got on or else. And if you want to get your own, just order it. It's fine. I know everybody wants this. Oh, I love it so much. <gasps> Which sidekick are you? Should I do this quiz as well? Should I? Go on then. So you're either Olaf or Sven. Where did I put my pen? <laughs> That's right. Right, let's let's do this. Okay, so let me, let me know which psychic you are as well. Question one. Would you describe yourself as a chatterbox? A. Yes, I could talk for hours even if nobody's listening. Or B. No, I may be a deep thinker but I'm a person of a few words. I think I'm A. I think I'm more A. Uh, I could talk more for hours. Like, I love to fill the silence. Like, I think silence makes things awkward. So I like to fill the silence. I think I'm a bit of a chatterbox. Question two. How do you feel about hard work? Pull in a wagon with four passengers, for example. A. Um, I'd rather sit in a wagon and read a book. Or B. Only four passengers. Call that hard work. I think this question is very obviously tailored towards one thing. But I would probably say A. You know, as soon as you mention a book, I'm in. So, obviously, A. Question number three. If your best friend is feeling upset, how do you comfort them? A. I try to cheer them up by being funny and talking positively. B. I stay quietly by their side and maybe give them a gentle back rub. I would probably say A. I like to, I do like to lighten the mood. I like to bring positive things out and try and find the light part of situations. Question number four. Do you tend to just accept anything you read or hear? A. Yes, why not? People wouldn't write or say something that wasn't true. Or B. No, I only trust my own instincts and people I know well. B. Yeah, definitely B. Five. Are you curious? A. You bet. If anything new or strange is going on, I'll be there in a heartbeat. B. Not really. Mind you, I'm up for an adventure if it's for a good cause. Um, that was a bit of a harder one. Um, if anything's new, I don't think I would rush too straight into something, even if I was curious. Like, I, I am up for an adventure, but I wouldn't exactly say I'd be there in a heartbeat. So B for that one. So, and um, if you, so, so I got Olaf, of course, like, I think... Out of all the characters in Frozen, I would probably more say I'm an Olaf. So I got Olaf, which is full of jokes and fun. You're great at making friends laugh. You're curious about the world around you and love to learn new things. But if you've got mostly Bays, you're Sven. And quiet but confident, you are clever and don't need to be the centre of attention. You are always ready to help those you love. Ah, oh, amazing, amazing. Like, these quizzes were tough. But please let me know if you've got Olaf or Sven or Honor or Elsa. Let me know. Oh, I'm going to have so much fun with this book. Oh, is this on Goodreads? Is this book on Goodreads? Will it count towards my 100 book goal? Oh, just look, 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 look. Here. God, I'm so, I am so excited for Frozen 2. Anyway, I'm going to head off. I'm going to read something. I don't want this vlog to be too long. And I think I've vlogged the last two days. So, oops. This is going to be a long vlog. Uh, anyway, I am going to head off and read. So, yeah. Hey, it is Wednesday and I haven't updated you in some time. I am going to be going through some reading updates with you right now. And as you can see, I've set up for my... Well, I'm going to make a couple of believe -a videos, I think. it's uh, I've been so excited to make these videos for quite some time. So, I am really... Really excited to do that. <laughs> I'm not making any sense. So I finished Horror Store by Grady Hendrix on Sunday and I gave this one four stars. I really enjoyed it. This was my buddy real Cordy and I think she gave it four stars as well. We both did enjoy it. We thought it was super fun. It had a really good story and yeah, don't get me wrong, it had a really good story. Uh, a couple of things that let me down, I guess, was that I just never felt scared during this and it never really went that creepy. There's one moment where it was really, really gross, and it, it was just absolutely disgusting. It was such a fun story, and I really identified with Amy. Like, I can't remember what I said in my last update. Amy is a very good protagonist because she is quite down to earth, but she is, you can tell she's quite bitter about the fact that she works in retail, and I think she can come across as sort of relatable every now and then. Uh, sometimes she does make the best decisions, but, I did still enjoy her as a main character. She really did drive the story and I enjoyed a couple of the other characters. It had a really good ending as well. I kind of really want to see more of this but it had a good ending. I thought it ended really well. Um, sometimes it went a little bit ridiculous, I'm not gonna lie. I really enjoyed the layout of it and I enjoyed the fact that the chapter beginnings were like different kind of products. 
that kind of got a bit more creepy as it went along. But then I thought also at times it wasn't like the best written. I guess some jokes just like, some jokes hit and it was really funny, but then other jokes just missed them all completely. And yeah, I just don't think it kind of got the, I didn't really get the horror out of this. It was just a really fun time. And then I finished Marrow Charm, yes, was it last night? Yeah, I think it was last night. Marrow Charm by Kristen Jack. And I gave that one four stars as well. It was so good. I read it and it kind of felt like a video game. Cause what, so what it is is um, if we follow a girl called Azzy and then Azzy loses her brother in the above. So then she has to go on this like adventure to try and find him and save him. Yeah, and we just like, the story kept going into moments where you could just like feel it as if it was gonna be like a boss fight. So yeah, Azzy follows her brother into the above and she comes across different kinds of monsters and creatures and it, it was just so good. Um, I could just like imagine myself playing it as a video game. There were some really genuinely like creepy moments. Like there was this eel woman and she just seemed so creepy, but at the same time, like not all monsters are monsters. So, you know, but I really enjoyed the description of a lot of these monsters and it made them feel very lifelike and it was very well written. It had really strong prose. So it was like very description heavy. Uh, which I do enjoy in my books and it was just very atmospheric. I definitely felt some Bloodborne vibes from it. So yeah, that was really good. And I did try and buddy read that with Paige, but I was really bad at trying to keep up and then I just like plowed through it in the end. And yeah, Paige was enjoying it the last time I spoke to Paige. So I want to see what she thought of it. I want to have to try and get it on paperback though. Because like I, I read it on my Kindle, but I really want to get the physical copy. So I want to do that. In present time, I got sent this from Bloomsbury, which I didn't ask for. So I was like really surprised when it came in. And it's Havenfall by Sarah Holland, but it came through. And I was like, what is this? Like, why is this like a box kind of thing, you know? And so I was trying to like pull it open from the top, but actually it turns out you just open it like this. And I love it, it's like a proper little doll. And inside is the book and these come in different colours as well. I've seen other people with proofs. So I saw an orange colour. So I've got like the, the blue, the blue, which you know, blue is my favourite colour, so I'm really glad. And as well as this little information booklet. But this is a YA fantasy that's coming out on 3rd of March, 2020. I haven't read anything by Sarah Holland before. So this is going to be, I'm sorry, like the glare is going to be so all over the place because it's very shiny. It's a very shiny book. It isn't really a summary. It's kind of like all the different kind of worlds, I think. Burn, Fjord and Kill, Solaria, Three Ancient Re Realms, Three Ancient Realms, Haven Fall, the safe haven between them all. Most people think Haven is just an ordinary small town high in the Rocky Mountains. Maddie Morrow knows differently. Her family is full of secrets. The inn at Haven Fall is the biggest secret of all. Deep beneath the beautiful sprawling manor are the doors between the ancient realms, including Burn, Field and Kill, and Solaria. The door to Solaria was sealed long ago by ancient magic for the protection of the other kingdoms. Once a year, delegates from each realm meet to keep the peace and celebrate the solstice under the careful watch of the innkeeper of Maddie's uncle. This year is different. The door to Solaria has been opened, and Maddie's safe haven will never be the same again. Very interesting. I will probably read this like December time maybe, December, January time. But thank you so much Bloomsbury for sending me this. I just still can't get over the fact that it came like this. It's just amazing. What am I gonna do? I'm just gonna have to like stick it up on the top because I don't wanna get rid of this. I wanna keep it in this forever. <laughs> and of course I got a parcel. So I'm gonna open this one. Tracy. <laughs> Tracy, honestly. Well, this had to be read ASAP since the fourth book is due out next year. Whoop, whoop. Sending big hugs, keep being the most fan fantastic person you are from Tracy. Ah, oh, I know what they are. And this there is some sticky. There we go, got it off. Ah, oh, Tracy. Oh, why is there so much stickers on these? Like for some reason it's got stickers just randomly placed on them. Really sticky stickers. Okay, Tracy sent me books two and three of the Cockheart Adventure series. So I've got Sky Circus and Moon Locket. I have Cogheart up there. Can you see it? This one? This one right here? You can't really see it. But she sent me these two and Moon Locket has yellow sprayed edges. That's really cool. But Sky Circus doesn't. Amazon, what you're playing at. I've been really interested in reading the Cogheart series. This is amazing. I was really looking forward to getting these. And Tracy, 
you've sent me too much already but thank you so much for this I appreciate it and I appreciate you so that's pretty much my reading update I'm gonna go film my believe -a videos and I will catch you whenever happy Friday uh, I just finished work so I'm gonna jump in the bath I need to do my believe -a TBR video so I've still got everything set up there as in I haven't put any of these back since I did my video for the author TBR um, when was that? That was two days ago. So on Wednesday, you can see my little frozen things up there. I need to do my TBR, but finish work. I'm going to go in the bath. I've got like channeling my inner jade here. I have a Lush bath bomb. At least I think it's from Lush. My sister got me this. This is it. I don't know what it's called, but it's very me. It's very me. Can you even see that? There. That looks like a frozen snowflake. And then, so that's very, very me. Uh, it does smell really nice and it's glittery too. So I'm probably going to be covered in glitter for my Believe It's TBR. It's all over my hands now. Shit. So look what I got sent from Walker. This is The Tall by Neil Schusterman. The last book in the Ark of a Scythe series. I've been waiting for this to come for ages. And then it came yesterday. But then actually The Tall has been released. So it's been pushed up. The release date's been pushed up. It's actually available to buy in store. Um, Waterstones have an exclusive version where there's like extra content at the back. This was supposed to be an advanced reader's copy and it, I get it the day the book actually comes out. I'm so gutted. I don't know if I'll be able to read this until December now though because I have believe -a next month and I still have a couple of books to finish. I haven't made any more progress with the Bone Season because I am buddy reading A Conjuring of Light by V.A. Schwab with Jade and I'm only about like 170 pages in. I'm making slow progress because I'm just like being far too busy. I probably also scared a few people on Twitter when I said that I'm having a hard time at the minute and I'm still not going to talk about it. Like I can't talk about it like on camera. I just I tried a couple of times to talk about my mental health and what I've been going through in my mind anyway. Um, I tried a couple of times to record something but both times I just said no, so I'm not going to do that, and I hope that's okay. Um, but I am better. I have been to the doctors, and I am on antidepressants. So, I mean, I don't know if it's working or not, but I do feel good today, and it's been a good couple of days, actually. I just had a bit of a, a breakdown on Sunday, but that's fine. That's fine. I am good now. I'm good now. So anybody who is worrying, I am absolutely fine. No need to panic. No need to worry. And I appreciate the support. So I am reading those. Uh, I also, one of the reasons why I even wanted to do an update is I got sent a box, which is like the first time ever that I've had like some kind of, like this is, you know, a bit like Alcrate and Illumicrate and things like that. This is like a middle grade version of that. So it's called We Read Box. And I got asked if I would do an honest review on my channel if they sent me a free box. Um, so I said, absolutely. This is the September box. And they're going to be sending me the November one as well. So I'm excited about that. So I do kind of know what's in this one already because I couldn't control myself. And I went on their Instagram and saw what it is. But I'm still excited to open it. So I want to do that now. I'll, I'll set you down actually. So this is exciting. I feel like, you know, how everybody does these unboxings on their channels. I feel like them. Pretty much all my friends. So I'm just so excited that there's a middle grade version. Like... Oh, that makes my heart so happy. I want to get some scissors. <laughs> I've had the Descendants 3 soundtrack stuck in my head as well for the past, like, two months. Right, let's see what we have in here. I'll save the book to last, but I don't know what the book is. So, firstly, I have one of those, like, bracelet things. What do you even call them? It's sort of like a cheat sheet. It's like one of those rubber bracelets, and it has... Uh, Phoenix Rising on on there. Don't know if you can really see it, but yeah, it's got Phoenix Rising, Rising on there. And like, I'm not gonna lie, this colour looks great on me. There is this Literary Galaxy by... Oh, I can't even see that. This is how it looks like. And I will open it. I love this bag as well. That is so cute. I will be able to put things in there. I could do it as like a little money bag. That'll be cool. And then just bring it out. Oh, it looks so magical with all the stars and the moon on. Uh, so Literary Galaxy by... I'm so sorry. I can barely say it. Jamily? Ooh. And it inside it has... And it matches the colour of the book as well. This... 
another bracelet, I think it is. Honestly, I'm so bad at this. This is my first unboxing. I'm terrible. I am absolutely terrible. I think it's a bracelet. Um, oh, is it magnetic? I don't know how to... I, is this a bracelet? <laughs> I should probably have checked. But I think it's a bracelet. Might be a bandana, maybe? I could use it as a bandana, actually. Well, I might be thick, right? But I'm not too sure what that is. But it does match the book. <gasps> Maybe, is it something for the book? Is it like a book thing? You know what I mean? No, you probably don't know what I mean. <gasps> but I'll keep that. And yeah, it's got the um, Literary Galaxy there. And their social media. Ooh. Oh, 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 oh. I will link the Way Read box um, social stuff downstairs so you can see. And then we have a couple of pencils. One of them says practice makes progress and the other one says it's okay to be different. That is so true and I really needed pencils today at work. I was trying to draw the Gruffalo but I didn't have a pencil so I just had to do it in a pen and I'm not really good drawer anyway so that was dangerous stuff. But now I have a couple of pencils. I could probably take these to work actually. And these can be my like work pencils. Practice makes progress. It's okay to be different. I really do. I do like them. I do really like them. One of them's purple, one of them's blue. Probably can't see very well on the camera. There is this pin. You are more than enough and that goes with the book as well. You know, I want to take I want to take it out of the packing packaging. That might be that might help. So there is the pin. There you are more than enough. Ah, that's cute. I'm starting to collect pins now. I've got a couple of hot stopper pins that I want to put on my bag. And then we have there is actually a booklet. Does it say what's in this box? Okay, so there is a booklet, and it says what these things are. Fidget toy. Wooden twist and lock block. Oh, so this is like a fidget toy, which I will probably be able to give to my niece. She's nine. Almost nine. She's eight. These are commonly used by children with ADHD to help them focus in class by distracting their hands and helping them release excess energy. That's really good. I want to see if any of my, like, younger cousins have ADHD. I don't know if any of them do. But that will be a good show. If not, I can still let my niece have them and see if she'll take anything from that. That's really cool. I love the fact that it's for um, kids with ADHD. And here, there's also a notebook there, which has like butterflies on and capture your thoughts, which, you know, it will be great. Oh, and it's all blank pages as well. This will be really good to doodle in. And I, as I said, I've been um, drawing a bit because um, stuff for work. So I was trying to draw the Gruffalo. This will be good um, practice, actually. I could take this to work with me in practice. My drawing skills. I need the skills. But yeah, this notebook. It was actually designed by them. Oh, but that's really cool. That does, I really do like the cover of that. And it does match the book. I love how everything in this box matches the book. Oh, this is a ribbon bookmark. That's what this is. That's really cool. I've never had a ribbon bookmark before. Oh, it's to, and it's to represent the characters as well uh, in the book. Jamie and Ellen. But the book is The Boy with the Butterfly Mind by Victoria Williamson. Jamie Lee wants to be normal, but his ADHD makes him feel like his brain is full of butterflies. Ellen Watts wants to be perfect. If she can be, surely her dad will come home. When Jamie and Ellen's families join, chaos and order collide. But perhaps they have something in common. Maybe there's no such thing as normal or perfect. Maybe being yourself is more than enough. I have seen so many good things about this on Goodreads. This is going to be a very touching book. This will probably be perfect for believe a -thon prompt to read a book with real life issues because one of the main characters has ADHD, which is just makes me appreciate things like this even more. Like, I love how this whole box just really fit in with the book. There wasn't anything spare, you know, there was, um, everything had, kind of had a point. So I've got the notebook and the pencils, which, you know, goes hand in hand, really. And then obviously the, the bookmark, the ADHD uh, fidget toy, and the, the pin, the enamel pin, which I'm so happy to have. So this is actually amazing. Like, oh my god, I can't tell you how happy I am that there is now a middle grade box. Like, ah, oh, so good. Um, But I will link the We Read box down below. Unless it's We Read box. We Read box? We Read box. Well, maybe We Read because I haven't read them yet and read is past tense. So maybe We Read box. 
That's my logic. Anyway, I am so happy with this box. But thank you so much for sending me the box. I am looking forward to the November box, which um, November's theme is Natural Magic, and the box will include two atmospheric fantasy books. Two books in that one. The book we've chosen is the second in the series, and book one is a recent prize winner, so we couldn't separate them. Magical Animals, Seasonal Atmosphere, Victorian Era Setting, and The Fair Folk. It's been likened to the classic A Box of Delights, which we remember from our childhood. I'm trying to work out what it'll be, and it'll be something really obvious as well. Yep, that is it. I'm gonna jump in the bath. I have that lush bath bomb. I might do a little jade montage and then fill my TV off. So that's the plan, John. Also, I almost forgot, um, it also has this signed sort of book play thing. This book belongs to Best Wishes, Victoria Williamson, who is the author. So that's cool. I almost forgot to mention that. So yeah, that was my first unboxing. How great did that go? <laughs> right, anyway, thank you so much. I'm gonna head off and go in the bath. I think I'm supposed to wait a little bit longer before I put it in, like when the bath's a bit more full, at least usually Jade's is a bit more full, but I, I'm so impatient, I just want to put it in now, so let's see, let's see, I hope I don't drop my phone in the bath as well. Okay, let's go. Oh, oh, well hello there, oh my god, pink, that's so me. Oh, I, wow, that looks so cool. Oh, I'll put it in too early. I don't know how I... Oh, look at that. Oh, fill it up, fill it up. Oh, that was so satisfying. Yeah. Oh, it smells so good as well. Yeah, go on, get it out, get it out. Now I understand why Jay does this all the time. This is so cool. Okay. Oh, is it going blue? No, it's not. I thought it was going to be blue. That's. I thought it was losing its pink a bit. No. Okay, cool. Seen a bit. Just want to take a little. To be honest, I didn't see a Oscar, Suki, hello, hello my babies, hello, hello, hello you, Suki, oh, I love you, I love you as well, I love you. Hey, I've decided it's the last day of the vlog. It is the 30th of October, it is Wednesday, and I've edited this vlog all the way up until now, and it's nearly an hour long. And I've decided not to use some clips and things to try and shorten it. So I've decided this is gonna be the last day. I won't have a chance to really film tomorrow. And then after that, it is the start of Believe-a-thon. So it is Halloween tomorrow. I have some plans. After work, I am going to my friend Charlotte's, and we are going to watch Hocus Pocus, which she has never seen, so she needs to watch it ASAP. So I'm taking my Blu-ray player, I'm taking my Blu-ray of Hocus Pocus, and we're gonna watch it when I finish work. And I'm gonna take some Prosecco, we're gonna have some food, and it's just gonna be so good. And I won't be dressing up this year. I've dressed up pretty much every other year, but I just, I, I'm not doing it this year. So speaking of Charlotte, we went to see Margaret Atwood on Saturday a few days ago. We were quite far at the back, I'm not gonna lie, we were, we were two rows from the back. Doesn't matter though, we still got to see Margaret Atwood with our own eyes. We got to hear her voice and she is such a, a smart woman. She is like a powerhouse, she was so funny. And I really enjoyed, I enjoyed the talk. But to be fair, I don't think I really learned anything from it. Like nothing new about the Testaments or the Handmaid's Tale. It was just, it felt pretty standard and then it was over before we knew it. So, but, me and Charlotte did go for an Italian's beforehand and it was just a really, really nice day. I am so grateful for that. We got to catch up, got me out of the house and things like that. So it was it was really good. And since then I've just been working. I have been reading The Born Season by Samantha Shannon, which I finished before. I was reading this today at Starbucks. I had quite possibly my last pumpkin spice latte of the season, but that is to be continued. I enjoyed this one, I gave it four stars. I thought it was really, really good. A lot of it did go over my head because, you know, fantasy and the kind of concepts in this are very 
unique and it's quite a big idea to grasp but I do enjoy this story. I thought Paige was a really good protagonist and Paige is the main character and she is a dream walker. She can go into the ether where you can see like spirits and things and it was just really good. I enjoy the characters. I enjoy the story. I think I will talk about this a lot more in the Bornathon live show which I think is happening on November 8th. Definitely stay tuned for that. I think it's November 8th at 10 p.m. I will put the right date and time on the screen just in case I got that wrong. But Bornathon is hosted by Ashley at a Frolic Through Fiction. I'm very excited about the live show. It'll be the first live show I've done with her. So I know this is one of her favourite books and Samantha Shannon is one of her favourite authors. So I hope nothing I say is too controversial. But overall I really enjoyed it. Do want to talk more about this but the vlog is already running really long. So I think I would just like keep it quite brief. Because I also got my November box for We Read Box. It looks like a jigsaw puzzle and actually on the side it does say a 100 piece jigsaw puzzle. But I'm going to unbox this for you now. And I was thinking should I do a separate video but I don't really do unboxing videos. And I just thought I would keep them on my vlogs for now and then if I get any more I'd see how this is received and then if there's any more maybe do them separately. So I will open this now. I've had this for a few days and I've been excited to open it so let's crack into it. I love the design of this by the way. I love this image. I don't know if this is something that they've designed themselves. I will find out. It does say Image copyright Samantha Doyle 2019. So maybe it was made specially for this. I don't know. But it feels great. It feels painted actually. I know it's not, but it feels like, you know, that that paint feeling. It feels like that. So I'm gonna open this. Oh, yes. Okay, so I know exactly what the book is, although there's two books in here. Oh yes, yes. I don't actually own these books. So yeah, as I mentioned earlier, Way Read Box is a middle grade children's book subscription box and there is actually a jigsaw puzzle in here and it is 100 piece I love jigsaw puzzles I haven't made one in such a long time like foamed one up so this will be really fun to actually do and it must be this it must be this image which I mean it's a beautiful image so this will be really fun to do I might save this and do it with my niece we have another enamel pin which I will open up for you and it is an enamel pin of a fox. That is how it looks. It looks really, really nice. And I'm really starting to get a lot of enamel pins. So my bag is going to look on point. There is a little bell, which I'm not sure what that's for, but it's like a chestnut. It's, it's not even a bell, it's a chestnut. But this must... Like, it's got a hook there, like, this is what it looks like, and it's got the hook on the top. I must, yeah, I, so obviously I can clip this onto something, but I don't know what to clip it on yet. <laughs> there is the November 2019 Natural Magic booklet as well. Yeah, it says exactly what is in here, but there is this bookmark as well, which has a different design on either side. Uh, one side says, this is far too heavy, what's in it? My books. Trapped inside a room of books, a room of stories left untold. I really enjoy that. I love bookmarks and that is a really nice bookmark. It'll definitely, it definitely matches the books. I'm so happy that there's two books in here, it looks so good. Uh, oh my gosh, and they're signed? Okay, I've just like read the booklet there. So, uh, first of all, there is this little goodie bag that is stick it down Oop, and I've just ripped it. Ooh, okay. Ooh, ooh, okay. This is, ooh, okay. Oh, it's a make your own Christmas tree ornament. That's so cool. Get folding and make your very own, I'm not, oh wait, hang on, I can't say it until I tell you the books. But there is like a little create your own Christmas ornament thing. There's string, a leaf, a circle. <laughs> A little cog and there are sheets of paper so this will be really cool I hope there's instructions because I'm terrible at making things I am not a very handyman kind of person but this looks very fun maybe it's something else I could do with my niece and now getting to the books which I have seen the first one I didn't actually realize there was gonna be a second one so yep in this box we have the Clockwork Crow by Catherine Fisher 
and the sequel, The Velvet Fox by Catherine Fisher. These are quite thin children's books, but they have beautiful covers, and I love the way it looks. Like, that is just absolutely gorgeous. Oh, yes. And what is great about this is that they are signed. So there's the first one, signed. The second one signed. That is so good. I am so happy with these. I'm so glad I don't already own these. <laughs> yeah, this was a really cool box. I love the fact that it was a, a sort of jigsaw box and with the jigsaw inside it. That's so cool. And it is their book of the month, The Velvet Fox. Uh, second in the series, star and, starting with the Clockwork Crow. So we had to include that too. A tale of a Victorian orphan who finds herself pitted against the Fae. It's really cool because in the booklet, there's also like some exclusive things that you can do on the website. There is a, a password to find an introductory video to The Clockwork Crow and The Velvet Fox by Catherine Fisher, plus the bonus puzzle artwork and manufacture videos. So those are like kind of like online exclusives when you have the password. And because it's like natural magic, there is a, a part of the booklet saying protect our natural world and telling you how to recycle and be eco-friendly, which will be great for kids. It has like recent and upcoming releases there as well. So it has Never Tell by Catherine Orton, which I know about and I think I'm going to be getting a copy sent for me from Walker. There is Frost Heart on there as well, which we know is the Believeathon group book. And The Fell Twins by Owen Colfer and The Book of Delights by John Macefield. So if you do get the Wavy box, you will get these September and November boxes within days of ordering them, according to them. But yeah, this is the Way Read box, and I am really happy with the November box. It is beautiful. I loved it. And I'm so happy with the books as well. Where did I put them? Okay, so I'm going to head off, and I will, yeah, wrap up this vlog. So <laughs> it was two weeks worth. It could have been longer had I not had my little breakdown in the middle there. It was filled with book hauls, as usual. So... <laughs> Uh, what else do you expect? But I'm really excited. I will start my Believe It Home vlogs from tomorrow so that I can try and document the Hocus Pocus night and then going into believe a So I'm I'm just so excited. I am so excited. And yeah, I will be doing the Midnight Feast on the night of November 1st into the 2nd. So that's Friday night. Mainly because, you know, it's the weekend and more people will be off work. And if you're joining in with your kids, which I know a lot of people are getting their kids involved in believe -thon, then, you know, maybe you could just, like, let them up till midnight, you know, just to, just for this, um, really good cause. So, yeah, I'm gonna, right, I'm gonna close this vlog now, because I know it's gonna be running long, and I know you guys don't have this time to waste on me, so I will head off. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you liked it, and subscribe. If you want to see more of me, I really appreciate and love every single one of you, so thank you so much for sticking by me, and yes, I will see you soon. Bye.